at today at Burgess Falls State Park and Natural Area. This big falls right over here. There's a trail that hikes out to it. And uh, that's how most people get there. Just another view that thousands of people will walk along this trail and stop and see. And so for most people, this is the best view that they're going to have. We're going to come in from a different way and get a different view of this place. See that creek coming in? That's how we're going to get here today. So to get down from the falls, you got to take this Cane Hollow Road. It's about a lane and a half. So if you meet somebody coming up the other way, uh, you got to scoot over into that ditch right there. And you're here. Today we're uh, on a little creek off Center Hill Lake. It's at the bottom of Cane Hollow Road. We're going to go out that way and upstream about two, two and a half miles. And we're going to go to uh, Burgess Falls. And uh, most people go in and hike in from the top, but uh, we're going in from the bottom. That's one of the things you see here is how these trees are up underneath the water. Uh, this is just a summer pool, so uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of trees underwater. It's it's not flooded. This is just how it is in the summertime. And when we get up a little bit further, we'll uh, we'll even be able to paddle through the woods. Right there here, you can tell how wide it is. And uh, the closer we get back to where the waterfall is, it's going to narrow down considerably. The kingbird up there. They fly around and catch bugs, and oh, that's a very handy one to have around. So right now, there's not a lot of boats coming through here, but uh, a little handy thing about coming through here is while the boats are in the main part, you can kick over here to the left and paddle through the trees and avoid the boats. Not very often you get to do something like this. Must be some really tall beavers around here. Look at this. <laughs> That's a big tall beaver right there. There's one tree that the beaver successfully tore down. We're gonna go through the woods over here and catch back up with the main part of the river. Over here on the left, you'll see this creek coming in. This is uh, from the Window Cliffs area. If you've ever hiked over there, or if you've ever seen a video from hiking at Window Cliffs, uh, that's where it joins in. So after you pass the uh, where the creek from Window Cliffs, where it comes in on the left, right after that, this whole thing narrows considerably. You're out here on the weekend. Uh, take full advantage of these places right through here where you can get away from the uh, motorboats. The, the, main, the main path is right over there on the other side of those trees. So this right here is a nice little separation from them. I'll give you another little piece of advice coming out here. Try to get here early in the morning because the earlier you get out here and start uh, the fewer people will be out here, but if you don't get out here till noon, it's hard to get a place to park back there on uh, Cane Hollow Road, and uh, it's just complete chaos trying to get back out. We're uh, about a mile and three quarters in, and I can just barely hear the waterfall up ahead. The crazy thing is, 
There's all this water coming down, but you don't feel like you're getting pushed back downstream again. Back in the 1920s through sometime in the 1940s, they had a hydroelectric uh, power plant here, and this is some of the remains of it, and this is how they powered the city of uh, Cookville. Got some big pipes running up the mountain there. Not sure how all that worked, but uh, there's some old photos of it at the state park. What about Don? Feel like going caving or what? <laughs> Probably never seen this guy before, but this is Don. He and our old caving buddies from back in the day. Way yeah. back in the day. Yeah. And now we're just too old to do that stuff, so we just go kayaking and stuff now. Yeah, it's really strange. You got all that water pumping over the top there, and you literally got no current whatsoever. So nothing to push you back. But at least the wind's not blowing, so it's not blowing in our face. That's one good thing. And even coming up here, there was no current to fight whatsoever. I mean, you'd think you'd get some kind of flow, but I mean, it's literally nothing. Well, if you, if you could see what this looks like, you know, without all the water stretching out into the trees and stuff, whatever the main channel of this would be, it probably is really small. Yeah. Got a couple of tight spots so that uh, if motor boats or pontoon boats or whatever want to come back through here, uh, you know, you, everybody's just got to make room for each other. But it's a very easy paddle. Very nice. Oh. Fun trip. One other thing to note about this place, the parking's complete chaos. Uh, so there's the uh, takeout point. We're gonna go about four miles up here to Taylor Creek, and we're gonna go see another waterfall and check it out. And this is another option for you if you're out here and you're bored. You've already seen that waterfall and you want something else to do. So this is Taylor Creek now. Uh, when we turned off, back when we saw the marina, uh, that's when we started heading up Taylor Creek. So we've got a couple of miles up here to a uh, waterfall. It's not as big as Burgess Falls, but we'll find out when we get here. Uh, see it up ahead. This is Fancher Falls right here, and it's about 70 feet tall. Ah, that's nice.
Yeah, so that's definitely a longer paddle from where we uh, started from. <laughs> if you if you paddled from Cookville Marina, it'll be just a little over two miles, but for us it was about four, maybe a little longer. Yeah, since we've been out here today, we've uh, seen an eagle a couple of times and we just heard him again, so maybe he'll fly over soon. get my camera up in case he cruises by I don't want to miss him all right so that waterfall back there if you want to go to it and just it if you go to Cookville Marina that's the closest place to go see it from if you go go to Burgess Falls you want to go back to uh, Cane Holler Road and that's the best place. And if you do both of them, it's going to be about 10 miles or so round trip. Yeah. Yeah. Billy, you're not going with me again. Yeah. This farmer's better than yours. Yeah. Yeah, Billy, I go kayaking with you and we're paddling against the current and against the wind. Me and Don go, we've got the wind at our back, so. <laughs> Sorry, Billy, you're fired. Sorry, Billy. <laughs> One of the things that boaters don't realize, I know they're trying to be polite and uh, slow down for us whenever they see us and they go by, but what they don't seem to understand is if they go by fast, it doesn't hardly make a wave. If they go by slow, then we always get these big waves. Just like this right here. Here we go. Right when they go by fast, it don't hardly make a ripple. Don sees something up here. And yeah, what Don saw was that there's a sign right over there from Fancher Falls you can't see now because it's all grown up. Okay, we are having to fight the wind. Okay. All right. Into the wind of Billy. Okay, Billy. You're not fired anymore. That wind stopped you. <laughs> what the hell? This is a beautiful day to be out here. Yeah. Or looking at Tom, so maybe the wind died down for a few minutes. Yeah. Billy, you're fired again. <laughs> well, the boat ramp's up here. It still looks a mile and a half away, but I see the boat ramp. <laughs> we'll see. I'll tell you what, we'll do this right here. It's it's a uh, uh, eleven point one six right now. I'm gonna say it's another whole mile. Really? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we're gonna be at twelve miles. So you say a half mile. So yeah, okay. Uh, so it's a it's eleven eleven point one eight right now. So we'll we'll give you eleven six to eleven seven, and I'm gonna say. 12 miles. I don't know what happened to the wind. It just stopped. Yeah, the <laughs> wind just really stopped. Did. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to wind up being about 12 miles all, all together. So, 12 miles is your longest day on the lake? <laughs> oh, definitely. No, no doubt about it. There it is, 12 miles, 5 hours, 21 minutes. What a day. 
right, so that was uh, Burgess Falls and Fancher Falls. Uh, hope you enjoyed that one. Get out of here and do it. Uh, we put in a little over 12 miles round trip, or you can just go to one or the other, and it's only about four miles round trip. But uh, uh, anyway, get out there and uh, go play in your yak, and we'll catch you on the next one. Later.